Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. For some time now, I've been mentioning that I was planning on doing a video on manual methods for controlling your turnouts and also for switching power to your frogs. So finally, we're going to get around to that today. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. And for that, I'm gonna focus down here onto the workbench so that we can take a close up look at these three methods that I have for you for manual control of your turnouts and switching power for your frogs. Okay, so the first uh, device uh, that I wanna show you is the Blue Point switch machines. And if you remember, I used these on the modules that I built about a year and a half ago for controlling the turnouts and the frog power on, that, on those modules. So basically these work very similar to a tortoise switch machine. Uh, all you have to do is move this device here in the center, this throw rod, and it controls the throw of this wire here. And that wire goes up through the baseboard and into the uh, throw bar on your turnout so that whenever you move this arm, it will change your turnout and set your points for the correct direction that you want. And these are basically installed with these push rod mechanisms here. They sell these little uh, wooden, turn wooden uh, control buttons and uh, these push rod devices plus the connecting hardware. And all you have to do then is install this and have this come to, through a hole on your fascia. And then you can simply use that manual method to control your turnouts. Now I said that these also control the polarity or the phase of your frog itself. If you look right here, there is a double pole, double throw switch that you can use and wire up to power your frog. So basically what I've done, and you only use half of this uh, for controlling the power to the frog. So you could use the other for a signal or something else. So basically then uh, I've got red and black wires here attached uh, to, the, uh, co uh, to the connections here. And those go to the DCC power buses. And then the one in the center with the green wire here, uh, that one goes to your frog. So if you were using, say, an electro frog or a uh, unifrog from Pico, then that green wire would go to the uh, wire that comes from the frog. If you were going to connect this to one of the new Walther's uh, turnouts, then that green wire would go to that little tab that is provided to power your frog. And of course, if you're going to use microengineering, you've got to learn how to solder to those bronze spots on the bottom of the frog casting. But at any rate, so this makes it quite easy you can manually control your turnouts, power your frog without any problems at all. These are fairly easy to install as I showed in the videos. And I will put a link uh, above me right here uh, to the three videos that I did. I did a video on installing these. I did another video on installing these push rods. And I did a third video on wiring these up to control the polarity or the phase of your frogs themselves. So go ahead and take a look at those videos. And if you're interested, I have about a dozen of these that uh, I'm getting rid of. So these will be for sale and um, I can make you a good price on these because I'm gonna be converting the module to uh, IP digital switch machines for some upcoming videos that I'm gonna be doing. So these are going to be surplus very soon. This is the first one that I've taken off of the module. So if you want these, they're in good shape. I haven't used them that much. Just let me know in the comments. Now this next method is one that you can actually build yourself. Matter of fact, I don't know of anybody that makes these available commercially. Basically you start with one of these single pole double throw switches or a double pole double throw switch as in this case. And some of the uh, KNS wire uh, I'll let you look at this. Hopefully I can get this in here so that it doesn't create a lot of glare. But you can find these at your hobby shop here in the United States. Uh, they are a K&S 
product and they usually have a display and most hobby shops are where they sell these various sizes of wire. This one here is 0 0.032 inch diameter uh, music wire or piano wire and um, this will be used for a couple of different things. So let me show you that. As I said, you start with one of these uh, very inexpensive slide switches. Um, these sell for very little money. You can get them from allelectronics.com. And then you drill a hole right here in the side. Let me see if I can show you that. So there's a hole drilled in the side here. And then there's another hole drilled here in the top. And those are for inserting wire. You insert one wire here in the top and that will go up through the bottom of the layout uh, or through your uh, road bed, sub road bed, and through the hole in the middle of the throw bar. And then this device is screwed to the bottom of your sub road bed. And so this works particularly good where you've got a plywood or other type of solid surface that you can screw this into. You'll notice here that I've got a couple of aluminum rod looking things. These are pieces of uh, aluminum or, or any other metal that you can find, tube. And basically, I just cut these. I, I got these out of the same rack of the K&S um, uh, metal rack uh, at the hobby shop. They sell these there too. You can get them about a foot long. And then you can just cut these with a hacksaw into the lengths that you need. And these serve as a standoff so that this is installed below the bottom of your layout, right below your points on your turnout. So let's look at an installation here. Okay, so this is one that I've already made up as a mock-up for you to see. Let me move this up here. There we go. So I've got my switch installed underneath of the turnout, and then I have this piece of wire here. And this piece of wire runs out to the fascia, and that's what you will use to throw your turnouts. I have a wire, that 0.032 inch diamond of wire goes from here up through the bottom. I've got a little piece of plastic right here with a hole or a small hole drilled through it that this piece of wire goes through and that's going to serve as the fulcrum uh, for this mechanism. And then it comes up right through the bottom of the Walther's turnout. And by the way, this is one of these new Walther's turnouts with the continuous closure rail and point rail. Because people had asked me uh, whether or not uh, I would be able to throw that using a, uh, a, a wire rod like this. So let's see how it works. So I'm just going to take this and move it side to side. And you can see that the points are closing. So you can do this. Now it does take a little bit of adjustment, fine tuning with the uh, placement of this piece of plastic here, and also with the thickness of this uh, rod or wire that goes up. But that's entirely how it works. So all I'm doing is moving that switch using this piece of wire. So it's similar in some respects to the throw or the push rods or throw rods used on the blue point switch machines. So that's how that works. Now, how, how about the uh, power for your frog? Well, let's look at the bottom. So what I've done here is I have my red and my green wires, which will go to the DCC power bus. And I have this yellow wire then that goes to the uh, frog contact on the turnout. So that provides the power to the turnout. And when you throw the switch here to control the points, it will also change the polarity or phase that is sent to your frog right here. So that's very simple, easy to do. And as you can see here, this gives you another idea of how to install these. And again, these little standoffs here, you could use nylon ones, you could use brass, you could use steel, you can use aluminum, whatever is available and cheapest at your hobby shop. Okay. And that's all there is to it. It's a very straightforward, easy to build mechanism, but it's something that you have to uh, adjust uh, the dimensions for to your model railroad. So I really can't provide any real details as to how long these need to be. Let's take a look at a commercial, another commercially available method uh, that you can purchase 
uh, through your Walther's dealer or possibly at your hobby shop. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Okay, now this next one is one that is commercially available. As I said, you can order this from one of your Walther's dealers, or you, some hobby shops might carry these if they specialize in model railroading. And this is a Caboose Industries ground throw kit. It's a 119R, and it's designed for N-scale and HO scale. I'm not sure if they have one for S and O scale, but you might check the Walther's catalog for that. And basically they have instructions here on the back. Not a lot of, uh, of diagrams, but they're fairly thorough instructions. And I'll show you how this all goes together as well. Now, here on the other side, they have fairly complete instructions for how to wire these up to control the polarity or phase of your frog. So they have everything covered right here in this little package. What's included in the package then? Well, the first thing you have here is a operating ground throw. So it's similar to the ground throws that were used on real railroads or are used on railroads in the US. So you just flip this little device here and that drives this throw mechanism. It's hard to show you that because it's all black, but that's how it works. So at least this part, it comes all put together ready to use and the rest are just additional parts to add on. Now, a couple of things to look at. Right here, there's another rectangular piece of plastic the same size as this one. And that is provided for you as a shim in case you need to raise the height of your mechanism, your, your ground throw, to where it can engage the throw bar on your turnout. So you don't have to use this or you can use it if you need it. On this casting, they also have a number of different um, connectors provided. This one right here, as you can see, has fairly small pins. And then that allows you to connect to the throw bar here on your turnout points. So you can see that's how that is going to work. So the ground throw is going to sit here on your headstock and it is going to engage the throw bar here on your turnout. And this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and shorten it a little bit. So I'm just going to flip this over and cut off that first pin in the uh, casting. Okay, then this little guy right here slides into the end of the throw mechanism coming out of the uh, ground throw. And it's got a little bitty nib on it that fits into a slot right here on the top of this. I hope you can see that. And that's going to hold it firmly in place once you get it in there. There. So now that's in there and when I move the throw rod here, moving the mechanism, you can see that that little device is moving in and out. And then, there we go, got that in there now. When I move the uh, throw rod here on the uh, ground throw, so you can see how smoothly that works. And that allows you and your, your operators on your model railroad to simply throw this here and it will change your points for you. Okay, let's look at the rest of this installation. As you can see here, they have a selection of different connectors here designed for use with different brands of turnouts. And as you can see right here, they list these connectors as being for Pico, Roco, Atlas, Microengineering, and uh, most others. So one way or another, you're likely to find some kind of connector to be used with your turnouts. Now for switching the power for your frog, they have this device here. It's a plastic uh, casting with three pieces of metal uh, installed in it. Also, they have these little phosphor bronze contacts right here, and they provide you two of them just in case one of them gets away from you. And this 
sits right here in this opening. So if you look right here on the top, there is an, a small opening and this little phosphor bronze piece sits right here on the edge of that. So I'll show you that from both sides. And this is the contact for the switching mechanism. So we want to put that in there first. Okay. Then we need to trim off one of these little guys right here, one of these inserts. And one of those is going to be used to hold this all together. Now this is the point where things get kind of difficult. They tell you that there's this little flat piece that you're supposed to insert in behind this phosphor bronze contact. I've tried several different uh, ways to insert this little uh, uh, flat uh, device in there, uh, right behind the bronze uh, contact, and it just won't stay no matter what I do. So I uh, went ahead, I used some of my Loctite super glue, and I glued this little bronze contact in place, and I'm going to put a drop of it on the back side of this as well to hold this little spacer in here. And they say to insert it with the flat side in the opening. Well, there's two flat sides and they're not very helpful as to what goes where or how. So I'm just going to drop it in here and we're going to let the super glue take care of it. And hopefully that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, now the next step is to take this guy here, which is the other contact, so it's got these three arms, and the rounded side goes towards the, the bronze clip. So that sits down in here, and then there's a couple of arms that go down into that slot there. And then you pop this one into place. So then as you move the mechanism, the little bronze wiper lines up with only two of these metal prongs. And that's going to give you that switching mechanism. So now we need to finish off. And what they have here, they give you this little piece of plastic with three openings. So I'm going to cut that loose from the sprue. And then this is designed to slide over the ends of these three prongs, three metal legs here. And you'll find that one of them is undersized. And it's done that way on purpose so that it will stay in place. So all you have to do is slide that on there. And that's going to keep these legs evenly spaced apart. They're not going to wobble around. And it's not going to fall off because it's on there nice and tight. Okay, so now the final thing we need to do is make electrical connections here. So I've got it all set up here to be soldered to. Uh, let me get, I've got some solder and I've got my soldering iron already. So I'm going to pre tin right here at the bottom. And they warn you to stay away from the, uh, that piece of plastic so that you don't melt it. Okay, so those are pretend. And I'm going to pretend my wires. Okay, now I'm going to use yellow for the frog, so I'm going to do that one first. So we'll put that right here, like so. And we'll do a red one and a green one on either side. Now one thing I recommend is use one of these um, heat sinks between the plastic and the um, part that you're soldering on, the wire you're soldering on, so that you won't melt these. I forgot to do that for that first one, so let's uh, hope I didn't ruin it in the process here. And let me change this orientation just a hair. There, okay. And what that little clip will do is it will absorb any excess heat that might go up and melt that uh, plastic spacer. That one's done. 
and we'll get one more over here. And you can find these heat sinks on uh, eBay, places like that, electronics suppliers which should have them as well. Okay, so we've now got the wiring ready to go. So again, the red and the green wires would be attached to your DCC power bus, and the yellow wire here in the center would go to your frog contact. Each time that you throw the points using this mechanism, with that connector inserted into the hole in the end of the throw, rod, throw bar on your uh, points or on your turnout, that is going to change the route through the turnout. And using this switch built in here, it's going to change the polarity or phase of power out the frog for you. Now this is a neat little mechanism. It also means you're going to have to cut a hole through the top of your layout in order to insert this switched uh, part down through uh, because this has to sit right there on the uh, edge of your turnout itself. Also, I'm not at all impressed with this little insert uh, mechanism that they give you. Uh, the super glue did it, held everything together, and it works fine, but you shouldn't have to do that. It should work properly, but, you know, this, to my knowledge, this is the only one of these uh, that is made, so beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope uh, these methods will be of some use to you on your model railroad. You can still use manual methods and also provide the correct phase of power to your frogs without going to those electronic devices. So, give these a try and have a great week. And I'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.